we are on our way on the biggest journey 2023 we're just leaving the house this is what thursday june something oh uh june 8th today's june 8th i've lost track of what day it is because all i've been doing is working in this episode friends we're gonna tell you about why we choose to travel with an rv for our vacations and um you know kind of some situational things that just make rv traveling the best method in, in our minds so it's just some housekeeping stuff though we are on our way to north carolina currently to lake reedsville which uh is something we've never really heard about or been to or anything like that but we were looking for a campground to stop at on our way and so that's what we found our end destination is Huntington Beach State Park in South Carolina. So Lake Reedsville is an approximate halfway point between our home and Huntington Beach. So uh, it's going to serve as a nice stopping over point, give us a break, the kids a break, and the dogs a break. That way we're all in a better mood when we do eventually pull into uh, Huntington Beach. So. You may notice that there are no kids in the back seat. So uh, Rachel's parents have had them all week, which has been extremely helpful for us in packing and getting ready for this, this adventure. So those of you with children, I'm sure you know how much effort it is to put together something like this. And so it has been quite a bit easier without the children at the house to pack and all that stuff. And so that kind of leads into this discussion but definitely from Rachel's perspective, traveling with children is easier with an RV than, than any other method. So I'm sure you can fill them in on that. Yeah, so my biggest thing with preferring to RV is that I can put things in the camper, toiletries and toys and blankets and pillows, especially for Sarah's bunk. It's just full of toys and pillows and blankets that just stay in the camper. And then when it comes time to leave for a trip, the only thing that I have to pack is clothes and food. So going somewhere without the RV, I'm having to all of a sudden remember all of these things that I don't have to think about when we take the RV somewhere. And half the time I do, I end up forgetting something, someone's toothbrush, someone's shampoo or conditioner, someone's noise machine. It, it's just so much simpler for me to only have to worry about certain things when we go RVing versus if, if we had to stay in a hotel, my goodness, I, I think I'd lose my mind. Well, you're constantly I, taking things in and out of the truck, you know, you pack everything up into the truck, you get where you're going, then you got to unpack it all and take it into your hotel or your Airbnb or, or whatever the case may be. And, uh, like, that gets exhausting. We rented a beach house once, and just the amount of stuff that had to be gone in and out and in and out, you're doing it like four times. Yeah. The travel trailer, we pack it once in the spring of everything we need for the entire season. And certain things come in and out, like this trip is the beach, so there's beach stuff that we only take to the beach. It just makes our lives a little bit simpler to have things that are just pre-stocked in the camper that just stay there and we don't have to think about them and then of course we have the dogs too right so with the travel trailer we take the dogs with us everywhere we go i said we rented a beach house well the time we did that we took the dogs and then uh there must have been a flea infestation in the beach house so then the dogs came home with fleas that was terrible yeah you know, there's no fleas back in the camper so uh and that kind of feeds into the next topic of the conversation is we have a lot more control over our surroundings and our trip because no one cares about our vacation more than us so I know that the camper and the truck are prepared and maintained to the best best possible manner uh, before this trip we changed the oil in the truck we check the tire pressure of the truck, we check the tire pressure of the RV, we grease the bearings of the RV, we sanitize the water tanks, check the lug nuts, check all that stuff. I know that everything is done as done as it could be. If you're flying or going by some other mode of transportation, those people, they're just doing the nine to five grind. It's not their vacation. They don't care about your vacation. So 
the reason Rachel's parents have our children right now is because my parents were supposed to be going to Europe. They didn't make it to Europe because airline malfunctions and uh, essentially everything had to be canceled. And I've been in that situation before, sitting at the airport wondering when we're going to get, in this case it was wondering when we're going to get to go home. We were stranded <laughs> at our vacation spot, sort of, uh, like halfway between, but those, uh, what are, what's the people that click all the, on the keyboard at the airport? The ticket people? Uh, there's a term for it. I don't know if it's like concierge desk or... I fly, I've flown like five times. I'm, I'm not that experienced. But anyhow, it's the people at the airport that, like, are trying to figure your stuff out, but, you know, they're just typing a million miles an hour, and you're not really sure what they're doing. Um, and then, of course, they can't figure anything out for you. That's just their 9-to-5 job. I mean, I'm sure that, for the most part, they're doing what they can, but at that point, you're at the mercy of somebody else. And um, we don't particularly care for that sort of scenario. And, you know, I'm not picking on, like, my parents or their travel choices. But it's been quite a few times that they've not made it to their destination because of airline snafus. I mean, obviously, there are still things that can go wrong when you're traveling this way. Your truck could break down and you could have all sorts of RV problems that are unforeseen. Pipes leaking, awnings blowing off, air blowouts. There's a lot of things that could go wrong, but... And we've experienced some things. If you watch our technical videos, I mean, like, it's all problem-solving scenarios. I mean, we've had we've had issues, but never really anything that ends our trip. We even had a truck issue with the GMC when we were in Ohio. So, uh, but we made it home. So, I guess all of that being said is, with this trip, we are trying to be the best prepared that we can possibly be, and. We're hoping that everything goes off without a hitch, and my PTO is this week, so this is the trip. There is no second chance. So we do everything we can to make sure that the trip happens and happens the way that the way that we want it to. Um, because the second chance, well, that might be a year from now. We right now are gonna go pick the kids up in Cumberland, Maryland, and then we're gonna head our way down south so I just wanted to kind of go over all this stuff with you so that this wasn't just a typical driving video we will keep you posted on our way down to Reedsville and then the Reedsville Lake episode will be next week let's go till we can't go no more picked up the kids in Cumberland so we're lucky we now have two extra passengers yeah it's good to have them back I uh, when I dropped them off and I got home that night I uh, told Ryan the first thing I said was I miss <laughs> I miss the kids we got a few gallons of gas at loves this says five hours essentially exactly to Lake Reedsville from here one other thing though is I guess I really need to start studying things on the GPS better. Apple Maps, boy, I'll tell you what, the road we were just on, like even if I wasn't towing a trailer, I wouldn't want to be on that road. They're really getting aggressive with taking you the fastest way possible, even if it's on essentially a one lane road. Some parts of it was barely even paved, you know, through the middle of nowhere. Like who wants to be on that for 10 miles, even if you're not towing a trailer? I don't know what it is with the algorithm lately with that, but it is getting, it's getting worse. This isn't like the first 
recent encounter we've had with, with stuff like that. We'll keep you posted along the way. We're also going to stop and get food somewhere is the goal. Now this says 8 o'clock or a little after arrival. This is like a gated place, so after hours uh, you need a code to get in. We just need to be quiet and courteous whenever we do get there because uh, at any campground during the later hours in the evening you don't want to be making a ton of noise because people because people would be trying to go to sleep. We do have the children back now and uh, they're not known for their quietness so wish us luck. Attention. Many people on the East Coast during this time period are experiencing this heavy smoke from the wildfires up in Canada. We feel sorry for the people of Canada and um, well we feel sorry for the forests more so than anything I think because we want to see the forests here for the next generations and um, as you can see hopefully on my GoPro footage or you might not be able to see much of anything because the haze is so thick. The Shenandoah Mountains, you know, normally when you drive down 81, you can really see, and today you can't because the smoke is so thick. Last year we were down this exact route twice. Um, we had a vacation in, in uh, Front Royal. We stayed at Shenandoah River State Park, and then we also drove the same route to Tennessee last year in October, and just the difference in clarity and um, viewing distance is drastic so but it's this is better than up home a couple hundred miles north so up home it was you know worse so it's going to be interesting to compare as we get further south uh, the difference in air quality and the difference in what what is there's a term for that the distance you can see. I know what you're saying, but I don't know what it's called. Uh, Y'all will be seeing this probably about a month from now, so this should all be said and said and done by then. But uh, but like I said, we did want to mention that we do feel bad yeah. for everybody that's being affected by this in any way, shape, and form because it's it's affecting a lot of people. <laughs> This is actually our third stop for gas, but we've just been kind of stopping for little bits here and there. Last time we only got a couple gallons at Love's. I'm not even sure where we are. Close to Lynchburg, I think. But we're getting food here at Sheets. And uh, so this is kind of like our last stop before we hit Reedsville. Uh, I'm not even sure how much longer we have to go, to be completely honest. Looks like two hours and 45 minutes left. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but we're gonna grab a quick bite to eat here. We're gonna take the, take the dogs, let them out, so they can go to the bathroom. 
all in all, really no problems so far on this drive. So, uh, knock on wood and hopefully we'll make it to Reedsville safely. Um, and hopefully we can make it there with enough light to actually set up the camper and unhook. But if we can't, you know, we'll just kind of deal with it in the morning. Now, according to the truck's computer, we've been getting 9.7 miles per gallon on this trip so far. Uh, so I'd say that's pretty good for towing with this truck. Um, I think as it's kind of breaking in, it's doing a little better actually on fuel. But we're just gonna kind of pull over to the side here. This is a nice sheet wherever we're at. Well, my friends, we have made it here to Reedsville Lake in North Carolina. Our campers, up at, we're up at site 24 here. So we got here late last night. And so as always, a reminder, just to be courteous to your fellow campers. Don't make too much noise. Don't point your headlights directly at other people's campsites. Turn them off if you can. And um, you know, just be kind and courteous to those around you when you're arriving after hours. If you are planning to stay here, at some point there is a gate code that you'll need to get in if you're arriving after hours. But friends, as for why we RV, it's because of adventures like the one we're about to have here at Reedsville Lake. So if you want to see this and more adventure, you should subscribe and be sure to pop in next week because we're going to be kayaking out on the lake here at Reedsville next week. And then uh, after that, we'll be moving on to Huntington Beach State Park down in South Carolina. So we will see you every Thursday at 5 o'clock.